Dear students, how are you? Today we will learn about the types of the exocrine glands. Exocrine glands are classified according to different terms. At first, according to the number of the cells. According to the number of the cells, exocrine glands are of two types. One is unicellular, from the name we can understand that here the gland consists of one cell, okay. Let's draw one cell and it is on the basal membrane and on either side of this gland of the cell or unicellular gland there are the epithelial cells epithelial cells simple columnar epithelium okay these are the epithelial cells nuclei goblet cell act as the unicellular gland consist of one cell and another one is multicellular most of the exocrine glands are multicellular in nature that is in this gland there are many cells are present within the gland Asinine and duct and all the cells have the nuclei. Another is according to the nature of the secretion. One is mucus. Here, if we draw the cut section of this region or cut section of an acinus, then we can see the mucus gland as uh, this rounded structure and Here, there are no secretory granule within the cells of the acinus. Okay. Only mucus secretion come out from these cells. And another one is serous. And if we consider another section, then you can see that. there is very small lumen and the cells of the sinus have their nuclei and there are many secretory granules within every cell Another one is according to the mode of secretion. One is merocrine. Merocrine gland. In case of merocrine gland, if we consider this structure as the merocrine gland, and these are the cells of the merocrine glands. Here are the nuclei. In 
In myocrine gland, the secretory granules are packed within a vesicle and the granule come out the cell by exocytosis. How? This vesicle come in contact with the cell membrane, apical side of the cell membrane and the secretory granule come out from the vesicle into the lumen. Another term is holocrine. If we consider this as the holocrine gland, then uh, you can see that here are the cells of the holocrine gland. It will cover all this area also and for the shortest of time I am drawing few of them. Each cell have their nuclei. In case of holocrine glands, this disintegrating cell becoming the secretion. That means this cell become detached from this area. Okay. So suppose one cell uh, previously were situated in this site. Now it is detached from here and come into the lumen. Okay. Okay. From here another one. The total cell is disintegrated and come into the lumen as the secretion. These are the holocrine glands. And another one is apocrine, apocrine gland. If we consider this one, gland and these are the cells and actually the cells will cover all this area due to the shortage of time I have drawn few of them these are the nuclei and in case of apocrine gland the secretory products are remain within the apical portion which has become a pocket like a structure containing the secretory product and pinching of the apical portion occur and it will come into the lumen with the secretory product okay from here secretory product will remain in this portion and pinching of this product of the uh, pouch with the product and that will come into the lumen as the secretion. And this type of merocrine mode of secretion is seen in most of the exocrine gland. The holocrine mode of secretion is seen in case of sebaceous gland of the skin and apocrine mode of secretion is seen in case of sweat gland. Now we will learn another classification according to the structural configuration. Before going to know the types of the glands according to structural configuration, we want to recapitulate one thing and that is uh, the portion of a parenchyma. If we consider the portion of a parenchyma, then we can see that there is a secretory portion and there is a an excretory portion and this excretory portion is termed as duct and the secretory portion is termed as the acinus. According to the structural configuration the exocrine glands are at first classified into two types 
one is simple and another is compound and these types depends on the presence of the branching of the duct if there is no branching is present in the duct then it will be termed as simple and if branching is present in the duct then it will be termed as compound Clear? simple glands are further classified into several terms on the basis of the shape of the secretory part i will put the red color in case of drawing the duct and i will put the blue color in case of drawing the secretory part so let's draw the further subdivisions at first there is single duct or duct is unbranched and secretory part is tubular in shape so so the name of the gland will be tubular and we have to read simple tubular gland here i am not drawing the cells inside the secretory part or inside the duct i am just drawing the outline of the gland for better clarification in case of next one single duct that is unbranched and secretory part is tubular in shape and branching is present so it will be termed as branched tubular okay it is the second one and the simple tubular gland is present in the mucus gland of the colon and intestinal glands and these branched tubular glands are present in the stomach and uterus next one here duct is unbranched or single and the secretory part is coiled and it is also tubular in shape so this should be termed as coiled tubular and we will read it as simple coiled tubular and this gland is present in the sweat gland another one here duct is unbranched and secretory part is alveolar in shape or acinar in shape so it should be termed as alveolar or acinar and we should read it at simple alveolar or simple acinar and this gland is present in the small mucus glands along the urethra in case of next one duct is unbranched or single and the secretory part is acinar in shape and branching is present here so this should be termed as branched alveolar or acinar and we should read it as simple branched alveolar or acinar gland and this gland is present in the sebaceous gland of the skin now let's draw the subdivisions of the compound gland we all know that in compound gland there is branching in the duct and here for the first one the secretory portion is tubular in shape so this gland will be termed as tubular and we should read it compound tubular gland this type of gland is present in the 
submucosal mucus gland of the Brunner in the duodenum. For the next one, there is branching in the duct. And the secretory portion is alveolar or acinar in shape. So, this should be termed as alveolar or acinar gland. And we should read compound alveolar or compound acinar gland. This type of gland is present in the exocrine portion of the pancreas. And in case of last one, branching is present in the duct. And for the secretory portion, some part is tubular and some part is alveolar. So it is tubular alveolar in shape. So this gland should be termed as tubulo alveolar or tubulo acinar and we should read compound tubulo acinar or compound tubulo alveolar gland. This type of gland is present in the salivary gland. Thank you for watching. I hope you uh, have understood the types of the exocrine gland. Stay tuned for the next class. In the next class I shall discuss about the connective tissue.